Obviously, his birthplace, Plymouth Notch, helped to fashion him, and of course, his father, Colonel John Coolidge, a man of rural means, a general storekeeper, insurance agent, farmer, and politician, helped to form him. Because from his father's business, he learned this lesson, which never left him. As I went about with my father when he collected taxes, I knew that when taxes were laid, someone had to work to earn money to pay them. It was not easy for Calvin Coolidge to be a public man, to speak, to meet persons, to shake hands, to do what ordinary politicians do as a matter of course. A horrible shyness possessed Calvin Coolidge, possessed him from his earliest days and never left him. He never denied it. He told friends, when I was a little fellow, I would go into a panic if I heard strange voices in the house. I felt I just couldn't meet people. Most of the visitors would sit with mother and father in the kitchen, and it was the hardest thing in the world to have to go through the kitchen door and give them a greeting. I was almost 10 before I realized I couldn't go on that way, and by fighting hard, I used to manage to get through that door. I'm all right with old friends, but every time I meet a stranger, I've got to go through the old kitchen door back home, and it's not easy. But leave the kitchen he did, and at Amherst College, his philosophy received valuable reinforcement. It is difficult to contend that Calvin Coolidge's philosophy differed greatly, if at all, from Colonel John Coolidge's. But history records a multiplicity of examples, a multiplicity squared of higher education transform transforming a son or daughter's ideology. Witness the transition of former Goldwater girl, Hillary Rodham at Wellesley, first to a freshman Rockefeller Republican, and then to a Jean McCarthy activist by her junior year. These things happen. They did not happen to Calvin Coolidge, in part because the majority of his classmates at Amherst were Republican, 45 of 78, and because he did not let them happen, but also because of the influence of two remarkable professors, Anson Daniel Morse and Charles Edward Garman. Anson Daniel Morse instructed Amherst students in history, and among the points he made was the importance of political parties, we may think nothing of that, but to Calvin Coolidge, they were of great importance, and he often emphasized that. In his 1925 inaugural address, he warned, since its very outset, it has been found necessary to conduct our government by means of political parties. That system would not have survived from generation to generation if it had not been fundamentally sound and provided the best instrumentalities for the most complete popular expression of popular will. It is not necessary to claim that it has always worked perfectly. It is enough to know that nothing better has been devised. 